everyone, it's Mao from Sparkly Belly. Last week, I did easy wide harem pants using the whole width of fabric. If you missed it, check it out from the link on the screen. This week, you will see another version of harem pants, and these ones are thinner than last week's, and you can add slits on the sides of the pants if you like. And at the end of the video, you will see my suggestion of how to coordinate these pants for those of you who want more conservative look. So let's get started. To make these harem pants, you need fabric. I'm using this beautiful dark moss green sheer fabric here. I couldn't tell if this was chiffon or organza because I bought this from the sale rack and it didn't have the information, but this was a bit too stiff for my liking. I recommend you use soft chiffon. You need about twice your pant length plus 20 centimeters or 8 inches. Thick elastic for the waistband and thin elastic for ankles. Thick ones should be about 2 to 2.5 two centimeters or 1 inch wide and the thin one should be about 5 millimeters or quarter of an inch wide. Pants? You need loose pants to use as a pattern. It doesn't matter how long they are, pajama pants or pajama shorts are perfect. And measuring tape, marker, scissors or rotary cutter, matching color thread and your sewing machine. First, take two measurements from your waist to the floor and the biggest part of your hip. Next, lay your fabric on the flat surface and fold it in half. Just like we did last week, take your pants, turn them inside out and put one leg inside the other one. Line up the pants at the seam like this. From the fold, measure 4 centimeters or 1 and 3 quarters of an inch and place the back side of your pants like this. And also make sure to give 1 centimeter or half an inch seam allowance from the raw edge. Then trace at 1 centimeter or half an inch away from the pants for seam allowance. Next, we do quick math here. Take the measurement of the largest part of your hip, divide it by 4, then add 12 centimeters or 5 inches. Take that number and measure it along the fold from the end of the line you traced earlier, mark it, then measure it again and mark it here as well. Take the front side of the pants and line up the top of the curve at the mark tentatively. Then go back to the edge and measure from the fold to the end of the curved line. Transfer it to where your pants are, line up the measuring tape with the end of the curve of the pants, and mark the measurement. And gently drag your pants straight down so the end of the curve meets the point you just marked. Then trace. And just extend the line up to the mark on the fold. Now measure your pants length plus 6 centimeters or 2.5 inches from the fold and draw a line. Then measure from the edge to the mark in the middle at the top and measure the whole width that is from the edge to the end of the curved line and transfer these two measurements down to the line at the bottom so you can connect the dots. So by now you should have these lines and just cut along the lines. You will have four panels. Now keep each set of front and back panels together so they don't get all mixed up. So first finish the edge of the long straight lines so they won't fray. You can use zigzag stitches or you can do a rolled hem or use a serger. Next take a front piece and a back piece. Place right size or pretty size together. And we'll just do a straight stitch right next to the rolled hem or whatever you use to finish the edges from the top to 25 centimeters or 10 inches down and about 7 centimeters or 3 inches at the bottom. And if you don't want slits on the size of the pants, don't worry about measuring. Just do a straight stitch all the way from top to bottom. Next, we'll sew the inseam, which is from the crotch to the bottom, and finish the raw edges. And of course, repeat this for the other leg. 
Now flip one of the legs inside out and stick it inside the other leg so the right sides are facing together. Make sure to line up the crotch sections, line up the inseam and do a straight stitch along the curve all the way from front to back. And finish the raw edges however way you like. Alright, almost there. Take the inside leg out and it should look like a pair of big pants. So now we'll make casings for elastic. At the waist, fold 1 cm or just under half an inch and fold again 3 cm or a little over an inch. Do this all the way around, press it and place pins. Then do a straight stitch all the way around at a few millimeters or one eighth of an inch from the bottom folded edge. Make sure to leave a five centimeter or two inch gap at the back. And for the legs, fold five millimeters or quarter of an inch, then fold again one and a half centimeters or half an inch. Press, pin, and sew with a couple of millimeters or one eighth of an inch seam allowance. And again, leave a five centimeter or two inch gap. Now stand up and see how much elastic you need at the waist and ankles. For these harem pants, make sure that the elastic at the hem is tight, very tight, so the slits won't move around as you dance. Cut the elastic and thread each piece into the individual casings. Just as I did last week, I took two safety pins, secured one end of the elastic at the seam allowance with one safety pin so I don't lose it, and used the other safety pin to guide the elastic through the casing. Then sew the ends of the elastic together for all of them and stitch up the gaps. And your harem pants are ready to wear! So these harem pants are pretty to wear on their own with a belt or hip scarves. Here I put on the 10 minute overskirt from a few weeks back, tied one end and layered another hip scarf. And these harem pants can also help you achieve a more conservative look. I hear many dancers don't want to show too much of their legs when they wear circle skirts with openings but don't enjoy the look of harem pants under their skirts. But if you make these harem pants with light material like this one, you get both the comfort of wearing pants under your circle skirt and the glimpses of your skin which make the whole look light not bulky. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you liked it, please share it with your belly dance sisters. And as usual, please share your creations at Sparkly Belly's Facebook page and sign up for the Sparkly Belly newsletter from my blog to get access to special freebies like patterns and templates only available to newsletter subscribers. Thanks for watching and keep sparkling!